Good day, friends. Often, shooting in Counter-Strike is considered a rather complex and unclear skill. However, today we are going to dispel this myth and show that any player, even a complete beginner, can master shooting. This is Farm Skins. Enjoy the video. And we can't leave you without a giveaway. Comment your rank or elo so we understand your skill level. It will be interesting to read. A few random commentators will receive a case code. But don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Only by meeting all these conditions will you participate in the giveaway. Let's start by going over the basic of CS shooting. This will come in handy whether you are new or want to review the fundamentals. So, load up any single player map and shoot at a wall while keeping your mouse still. Do this a few times and you'll see the bullets follow roughly the same path. This is called recoil. At close range, you need to spray pulling down to compensate for recoil. At an advanced level, players mirror the recoil pattern inverted to counteract horizontal deviation. At a medium range, spraying becomes too random, so you shoot burst fire 3-5 shots at a time. At a long range, you need to tap one bullet at a time, aiming for the head. This is called tap shooting. In between shots, strafe left and right to make yourself a harder target. That's the basic of CS shooting. This information is more than enough for any new CS player, but it doesn't give a full picture of how shooting mechanics actually work. It's important to understand that the shooting mechanics in CSGO and CS2 are very similar. At least the spray patterns are identical in both games. In the second part of the video, we'll go over some mechanics from CS2, but for now, let's dig a little deeper into shooting questions and raise our understanding to a new level. Many find CS shooting to be complex and arcane, but it consists of just two simple components recoil and spread. Don't confuse this phenomena. Recoil pulls you crosshair up and sideways. Spread has no direction. It's essentially a circle with shots scattering randomly within it. To better understand, we'll demonstrate this individually. This is what shooting looks like without recoil or spread. Yes, simple. Bullets go to the center. This will be our starting point. Now let's add just recoil, controlled by weapon recoil scale. This is what recoil looks like on its own. Note that the pattern is always identical, down to the pixel. It doesn't depend on anything, not the player model position, whether crouching or standing, or any other actions like running or jumping. Recoil always followed the exact same path. So why isn't it like that in-game? Shooting while moving seems random, and the spray is always a bit different, because by default recoil works together with spread. Let's examine in the same way. We'll turn off recoil and bring back spread, governed by weapon accuracy no spread. Now shooting looks like this. Spread is simple. It deviates shots randomly within a circle determined by weapon's spread value. You can see this size with weapon debut spread show too. Spread increases slightly when spraying. It increases a lot during jumps and movement. And it decreases slightly when crouching. So by combining these two simple phenomena, shooting in Counter-Strike is created. The longer the spray, the more spread increases. So later, in the end of the spray, we get more randomness. Here you may notice this looks a bit different from shooting on Faceit or MM. It's smoother, missing something. That's because we also disabled a little known command, Weapon Recoil View Punch Extra. It rarely gets mentioned because all it does is add screen shake. That's really all we need to know about CS shooting. Now let's move on to what we need to understand and not always obvious consequences of these rules. First, let's go over some points under the code name It Doesn't Rag. As we said, spread is a circle whose radius is never zero. At a long enough range, it can still make the bullets miss flying off to Narnia. And with certain guns like SMGs, the spread is much higher than AK or M4. Good to keep in mind. By the way, heard that shooting accuracy while moving crouched equals standing accuracy? Well, not quite. It depends on the weapon. Pistol moving accuracy is slightly better crouching than standing, but with any rifle, spread increases crouching. The difference is small, but it's there. And knowing it definitely won't hurt. Now let's talk about spray control. When it comes to spraying in CSGO, many advise going to an empty map, standing against the wall and training the spray pattern, pulling down, then sideways. You can try to group all bullets closer and closer together. But the problem with this method is the existence of spread. So what, you may ask? 
it's there during matches too, but it won't let you properly see your mistakes while practicing. Because after 4-5 shots especially spread add random deviation to each bullet. This uncertainly will greatly hinder correcting mistakes, so I suggest turning spread off for spray control practice. Now we only see the pattern itself and can accurate pinpoint where mouse movement needs adjustment. You can also disable screen shake for the same purpose, but don't overdo it. Turn it off briefly to build muscle memory, then turn it back on since shooting feels very different without shake. Don't try to practice the full 30 bullet spray right away. Follow the start simple principle. For example, break the padding into segments and practice one per day. First, count how many bullets go one direction. For the AK, it's 7 shots up at a slight angle. Only practice getting those into one point. Don't overspray, don't go past where spray starts shifting sideways. You can try with no spread or shake at first. Once you've built muscle memory, return screen shake. You need to get used to it. Then do the same thing with shake on. Now it's time to go into DM and cement this skill. Training one spray segment takes no more than 10 minutes, with about 20-30 in DM. Then you can move on to MM and try applying the technique in matches. It probably won't work at first, but be patient. It's a complex skill. In a few days when controlling the first segment becomes second nature, add a new segment to your training. Do the same thing. Count shots in the new segment, try to control it without spread or shake. Once you've got it down, return shake and get used to that. Then DM again to carve it into your muscle memory. Then we think you understood. Add one segment every few days. Train against the wall, DM, then face it or MM. Pay attention to inaccuracies in your spray control, gradually adding correction to refine it to perfection. And at first, it's not necessary for every shot to be dead center. It's enough to feel during the spray when and how much to pull your crosshair at any direction. And to catch the rhythm, pay attention to top players' spray in demos and highlights. It will showcase the technique at its best and give you an excellent benchmark. There's one other very interesting use for the commands we covered early on. Do you often practice aim on maps like aimbots? If so, you probably often have to slow down because you need to account for recoil and spread. Disabling these effects lets you focus only on aiming, giving your raw aim a boost. Ever notice that sometimes after a miss the bullet hole on the wall is right behind the enemy model? Unregistered shot. Or the opposite, they die when the tracer is way off. Let me explain how this happens. When you play, in addition to the game running on your PC, there is a server that needs to stay in sync with everything happening in the match. Even if you launch a single player game with bots, a server also run on your PC. So when you shoot it gets calculated twice, once client side on your PC and again on the server. Without waiting for the server, the client, your PC, draws the tracer and the bullet hole. At the same time, a data packet about your actions goes to the server, and the server responds saying what happened in its opinion, whether you hit the enemy, etc. Remember we said spread is a circle with bullets scattering randomly within it? Well, randomness is random to always be different. The client and the server each calculate hits based on their own random number generators. So the client shows you hitting right on target, but the server disagrees. Or vice versa, the tracer and the hole way off, but the server decides you got lucky this time. You can see these hits with SV show impacts 1. Red is client, blue is server. As we show impact 2 or 3 shows just blue or just red, server side or client side hits only. So you get the idea, shooting in CS is very simple at its core. It's governed by just two parameters, spread and recoil, plus the added effect of screen shake which doesn't influence where bullets go. And now let's talk about shooting in CS2. It has its own nuances too. Before discussing shooting, let's go over interface setting. With this switch to Source 2, maps have become much brighter, making light crosshairs a poor choice. They easily blend into the bright backgrounds, obscuring visibility during shooting. In this context, dark crosshairs are recommended. And another CS2 change is that the left hand command no longer works. Players can only use their right hand for weapon models. And last but not least, weapon related change is the inability to adjust weapon shake. Unlike CSGO, shake cannot be reduced or disabled in CS2. Now let's get into shooting itself. What has changed and how to shoot now? Let's start with the fundamental change T crate. 
In CS2, tick rate no longer matters, 128 or 64. It uses a new sub-tick system. This means if you scored a headshot in-game and it registered on your screen, it will also register on the server. However, it should be noted that there are some features in this system that require attention. For example, headshots register better, but display worse. If you get a headshot and move behind a wall, the hit can register after you're already behind cover. It goes both ways. Annoying to feel, but good to know it will count if you hit the head accurately. At the same time, the overall game feel became much smoother. It's not clear why. Even at low FPS, the game feels softer, more fluid and gentle. And of course, this greatly impacts shooting, because hitting models is easier, but simultaneously the game seems a little faster, so if you get picked, you likely can't react in time. This means you need to work on your own picking and pre-fires more. Now about the shooting itself. It has really become a little easier. Tapping is now perfect, especially with the current unbalanced deagles and SGs. But the spray has gotten slightly tighter while also feeling harder to control. So it's best to avoid spraying completely. But if you really want to, burst 3-4-5 shots max, don't go over 15. Either tap or burst 3-4-5 shots, that's optimal for CS2 right now. Yes, it may change over time, but it's the best for the current state. Movement shooting in CS2 feels entirely different, it has really become easier. Hitting targets while moving is simpler now. It's a truly interesting sensation. At the same time, the core shooting principles remain the same. You still want to hold long angles like in CSGO, because perspective works such that the further from a corner, the later opponents see you. So if you ride against the corner, your shoulder is visible way earlier than you see anything on your monitor. Next, clearing angles and pre-firing. These fundamentals should always be remembered when taking any positions. You should always enter pre-aiming where enemies would play in your theoretical path. You'll have to pre-fire every angle on every map constantly, and only then will it greatly increase your win rate. And crosshair placement must be head level. But don't forget about your own reaction zone. Give yourself a little space for your brain to react to the enemy peeking and then simply click, don't try flicking. Or if you do flick, it will be easier in your reaction zone. Meanwhile, CS2 new wallbang able smokes provide new shooting mechanics. Previously, when shooting smokes, blood splatter was the only way to know if someone was there. But now, because your bullets make holes after penetrating, you can literally see if an opponent is in a common position or not, especially by shooting corners. And you can always throw a hand grenade to check a smoke spot, then finish off anyone who remains. Well, that concludes necessary CS shooting skills, friends. Now is just practice and constant improvement. We're confident you can reach a high level of mastery. See you next time.